y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I will be telling y'all all about all the books that I read in December. So I know this is a little late and I haven't really talked about my yearly wrap up or my favorite books of the year, my least favorite books of the year, that kind of thing, my most anticipated books of the year. That is because I like to do those videos when the year starts because I actually do a lot of reading the last like five days of the year. I go on vacation then and I get a lot of reading done. So that's why I save those videos till after the year is actually done. But before I can talk about my favorite books and all of the books that I read in 2018, I have to talk about my December wrap up for 2018. So in total, I read eight books. Four of them were physical books. I read one ebook. I listened to one audiobook and I read two graphic novels. For my wrap-ups going forward in this year, I decided to change it up a little bit. I'm actually going to be starting from my least favorite read and leading up to my favorite read of the month. So my least favorite read of the year, number eight was the one audiobook that I listened to in December. I actually listened to another audiobook, but I finished it in January, so that will be in my January wrap up for my first read of the year. But yes, this audiobook was my least favorite that I read in December. And that is Alien Prince Charming by Zara Zenia. Basically this book is about a certain alien species who have come to Earth in search of aid because their planet is being overrun by disease and they desperately need resources and one of those things that will help them reestablish their planet is finding wives for these alien men because many of the women were eradicated or eliminated due to disease from their planet. So this follows one of the princes of this planet. There are many princes, all of them brothers. This story is mainly about the oldest one. Each brother is given a device that when they are close to their perfect match, it will go off. It'll tell them, hey, this is your soulmate, this is your mate. Um, this is the person you will make the best possible offspring with. Their genetics are the most compatible. That's what this device is and our main character, what's his name? Gardax, that's his name, okay. So Gardax gets this device. He like plants this whole entire party where a bunch of earth women to attend to see if one of them is his perfect match. When it turns out his perfect match is actually working in the kitchens of his palace and he's trying to figure out who that person is and our other main character is Amy who happens to be working in the kitchens. This story was just a whirlwind of emotions. I don't think any of them were per se good for me. <laughs> so I ended up giving this book a two out of five stars and I think I'm being very generous here. The only reason maybe why I didn't give it a one star is because the beginning was good a little bit. I was very hooked at the beginning. Once the middle hit and the end, I thought it was just going downhill, downhill. It wasn't good. The audiobook also was not good. I did not think the audiobook was the best it could have been. I didn't enjoy that at all. Also, there's only one narrator and it's a man. When the story is told from the point of view of Amy and Gardax, so I think it would have been way better if we would have gotten a woman and a man to narrate. The main problem that I saw with the audiobook is that it was not edited well. We have a bunch of sentences or instances where the narrator would repeat himself from the sentence he just said and then you could tell it was supposed to be the edited version. He would say the sentence twice in hopes to pick the sentence that was verbally said better. That happened quite often in this book. I kept thinking that I accidentally hit the rewind button. That wasn't what was going on. But overall, I didn't really enjoy this book at all. The seventh ranked book on this list is I'll Run To You by Nikki Vale. Apparently I am the only one who has left a review or a rating for this book on Goodreads. So yeah, we have this woman who just got her life put together, but then an old flame who like broke her heart comes back into the picture. That's basically what it is. I ended up giving it a 2.5 out of five stars. And again, I feel like I'm being generous. The beginning was better than the rest of the book. Once the man the love interest was introduced, I just think it went downhill. <laughs> it had insta love. I was not a fan of whatsoever. I thought the concept was great for it, but it, I don't think it was executed all that well. That happens quite often in free ebooks that I find on Amazon. This was one of them. And also there's a plot twist that you're supposed to be shocked by. I was not shocked by it whatsoever. I predicted it. There you go. That's all I have to say about this book. The third book that I read was my first graphic novel of the month, and that is V for Vendetta by Alan Moore. 
This was a required reading for my British literature class. This was for our modern unit. When we were discussing this book in class, so many people gave it praise and really enjoyed it. I didn't. <laughs> I know a few reasons why, but I don't know why. It just, this book irked me. I didn't like it. Like it has great ratings on Goodreads and I, I don't like it. It's like a good storyline and book. That's why I gave it a three out of five stars. I thought it was good. I didn't love it at all. I found it very, very, very confusing. The artwork in here could have been way better. <laughs> this is a book that takes place in like a futuristic world, like a dystopian world where like all the minorities are eradicated from the universe. All people of color, the LGBTQ community, Jewish people, like they're all eradicated from this world. So it's basically white men that are in this world. They all look the same. Like when, when drawn, they all look the exact same. I couldn't tell whose character was who because I didn't know because they all looked the same. From the graphic novel, you're supposed to see who is who. Like it doesn't say, ooh, John said this. It just says a picture. It just says a picture of them saying something, which I don't know who this person is. Yeah, basically it's a dystopian book where all minorities are eradicated from the universe. It's about this one guy, V, trying to use anarchy to corrupt the system. He was a minority and now he's trying to get back at the government for making the world this way. And um, sounded really cool. Didn't really like it. Okay, now getting into the books that I actually really enjoyed. <laughs> First, we have my second graphic novel that I read, which is Saga by Brian Vaughan. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I have been wanting to read this book for so long. I went to Barnes & Noble one day a while ago. Oh, and there's the receipt. <laughs> Fell out of the book. I've been wanting to read this book for a while and just because it's on bit, been on booktube for so long and everyone loves it, so I had to pick it up. It was only $10 at Barnes & Noble and I had a $10 bill with me, so I was like, I'll just buy it. Looks good. Um, And I really, really, really enjoyed it. It was my last read of 2018. If you didn't know, this is a graphic novel centered in, I want to say, just space. It's like a fantasy, fantasy in space, sci-fi, sp I don't know. Basically, these two people are of different species and uh, a bunch of people are out to capture them or kill them because they're two from two different species who have fallen in love and given birth to a child. <laughs> and that is not what anyone wants in this world. So many people are out to kill them for what they have done, which is just fallen in love and had a child. <laughs> so this is the repercussion of that. And it's really cool because we have the daughter also narrating from the future. And it's really cool to see that. I really enjoyed this installment. I gave it a four out of five stars. I can't wait to go pick up the next book to see what happens next. Coming in at number four, we have My Favorite Half Night Stand by Christina Lauren. I th honestly thought that this book would be way higher up on my list. I gave this book a four out of five stars when I have given almost every contemporary book besides the Beautiful Bastard series a five out of five star. I was honestly kind of expecting a little bit more from it, but I ended up really enjoying it. I read it on one day. I thought it related a lot to, or was very similar to their other book that I read earlier this month, which is later on this list. I just think it was a lot like that book, which never really happens for me in a Christina Lauren book. I always think that they come up with new ideas and storylines and characters that I've never seen before in one of their other books. That was kind of a little bit of a letdown for me, but I ended up really enjoying it nonetheless. Basically, we have our main character, Millie, who is friends with four guys. Her four best friends are all guys, and they have to get dates for this big gala that's happening at um, their school. They're all really professional professors, very, very high up there at the University of um, Santa Barbara. There you go. So what they decide to do is join a dating website in hopes to find a date for this gala that they have to go to. And it turns out that Millie ends up getting a lot of gross guy messages on these dating websites, which doesn't surprise me whatsoever. So she decides to form an alias of herself and make herself a little bit more professional on this website with a whole entire new account. And it turns out she gets matched up on the dating website with one of her best friends in her friend group. And it's the repercussions of that. I really enjoyed it. The only issue that I had is that it reminded me too much of Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating, but I really enjoyed it nonetheless. Millie and Reed were really cute to read about. Coming in at number three, we have Hopeless by Colleen Hoover. So I haven't read all of Colleen Hoover's books yet. I really want to. I 
kind of want to plan to read all of her books by the end of 2019. This is one of her first works, I believe, um, right after Slammed, I think. It's been sitting on my TBR for years and I've just never picked it up and I decided on a whim one day I'm just gonna do it I'm gonna pick it up and I'm really really glad I did I ended up giving this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars really loved it basically this all centers around a girl named Sky who is starting her senior year of high school in an actual school because all of her life she has been homeschooled by her adoptive mother and there she meets a guy named Dean Holder who has kind of like a bad boy reputation to him kind of has anger issues that kind of thing Sky is determined to stay away from Holder because of the reputation that he maintains and the certain instances and situations she has herself come in contact with with him but her heart may choose another route to go he has secrets of his own that lure sky in and sky has some secrets herself that she has not yet uncovered and it's just them coming together as friends as more than friends as just companions. This book hit me hard. I was not expecting to be hit hard by this book. So I have read a few of Colleen Hoover's books and her more recent ones are the ones that really hit me in the heart and like ooh, make me want to cry and I have cried in many of her books. But the first couple books that she has written, the Slammed series, I've read the first two and they're not like that at all. So I wasn't really expecting the gut-wrenching part in this book because it's one of her first books that she's written and uh, boy was I wrong. <laughs> this is a very emotional roller coaster. There are a lot of plot twists in this book like any Colleen Hoover book. My mind was blown throughout most of this but I really enjoyed this book. Totally recommend it if you're looking for a Colleen Hoover read. Coming in at number two is Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. I really 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 enjoy this book. <laughs> Basically this is all about our main characters Hazel and Josh. Hazel and Josh met originally in high school and back then Hazel did have a little bit of a crush on Josh but she thought that nothing could ever happen between them because Josh was such this perfect person that she could never reach. Hazel is kind of what you would consider a basket case. She is crazy. She collects many different pets. She teaches elementary school. She's quite an oddball to say the least and Josh is kind of the complete opposite of that. So that's one of the reasons why they think they will never be together or have feelings for each other because they're so different. And this story takes place 10 years after college, after they know each other. They end up meeting coincidentally again and it's the repercussion of that and I really, really enjoyed this book. It's a friend to lovers book and I haven't read one of those in a long while and this is one of my favorites of them following roomies and oh, it was it was just so good I really recommend this if you're into friend to lover trope and I gave a Josh and Hazel's guide to not dating a five out of five stars and coming in at number one we have Brightly Burn by Kirsten White this is the last book in the Conqueror saga the first book being and a dark and any second book being now I rise Ooh, there's something on my nose I ended up a buddy reading this whole entire series with Hannah from Being the Bookologist and Vendi from Cop Between Pages. I will link their channels both down below. I love their videos so much and we still have so much to discuss about this book and I can't wait to do it because I loved it so much. I thought it was an amazing conclusion to this trilogy. Five out of five stars for sure. I can't give you a summary of this book since it is the conclusion to the series, but I will give you a synopsis of the first book, And I Darken. This whole series is centered around Lada and Ra Du, who are the descendants of the royalty of the Transylvanian Wallachian monarchy. This is a historical fiction book mainly because Lada, the sister of Radu, is gender bent. So Lada is supposed to be Vlad the Impaler if Vlad the Impaler was born a woman. And so the whole history behind Vlad the Impaler is rewritten because Vlad is a girl in this book, Lada. So our two main characters, Lada and Radu, are sold to the Ottoman Empire by their father, Vlad. Another Vlad, not Vlad the Impaler. Lada is Vlad the Impaler. <laughs> they are sold to the Ottoman Empire for protection from the Ottoman Empire. So this is them when they are younger, in their tween ages, and them having to grow up in a foreign country with a foreign religion and foreign people with having no friends whatsoever except for themselves and one other person. So this starts out with them actually being born both of them being born the last book concludes with them in their adult years 
and I really enjoy this. I love a series that follows people through the ages, many years, and I just, I loved the third book, this whole series, so much. Every book I gave a five out of five stars to. If you're looking for a historical fiction book, I totally recommend this series. So here are some of the books that I read in December. This is six out of the eight that I read. I hope y'all enjoyed my last wrap up for 2018. Be sure to stay tuned for the next couple of weeks for um, my yearly year in review for 2018, my favorite books of 2018, my most anticipated books for 2019. Stay tuned for those videos. Be sure to let me know down in the comments below what your favorite book was that you read in December or if you have read any of these books or would like to. Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all soon with a new video. Bye!